Hello, South Strong Nation, Joe Simons, Lick Diamonds. We are back talking about Paddle Tales. We talked about Paddle Tales before. We've never talked this in depth about Paddle Tales because our guest, one of our insider members, Mr. Eric, I'm not even going to attempt to <laughs> butcher your last name. I'll let you say it. But he actually has been fishing with, and, and the dude catches some legit fish, as we'll be posting in this uh, podcast he catches actually not just legit fish but tons of fish it seems like every report he does and he only used paddle tail lures in particular just a couple of paddle tail lures for the entire year we had pat ogletree on did a similar podcast on his experiment which was topwater lures for an entire year and that was fascinating uh i learned a lot from that and uh i'm pumped to have you on eric to to, to, to hear what you learned and uh, I'm guessing, you know, you became a specialist, like like Luke always talks about. It's probably one of the hardest things, like talk about some self-control. It's probably one of the hardest things for a fisherman not to go out and buy a million different lures and a million different colors and sizes. And uh, and you did it. So first and foremost, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me. So and, uh, tell me the last name so I don't. Yeah, it's easier than it looks. Uh, Lopito. Oh, that is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> But how, on, how? Tell them how it's it, spelled. It's like it's like it's like fishing. You want to make it simple. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So besides Eric, if you're listening at home, car, workout, wherever you might be listening, uh, we've got Luke and Tony and Wyatt on as well. Wyatt is safely back from the crazy freeze that happened there in uh, in Texas. We're uh, we're pumped to to see you. Last time we saw Wyatt was on a Zoom call like this. And he was literally covered everywhere except like his eyes. And it was what, 30 something degrees inside your home? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was getting pretty bad. The apartment would get down so low at night that if you left water bottles out on the counter, they would freeze on the counter. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brutal. good. Brutal. And we got our main man, Tony. What's popping? Probably who's, well, paddle tails are popping and that's what's popping. <laughs> probably the guy who's posted the the second most about paddle tails so eric where are you first and foremost what uh, what city uh i live in ruskin yep just uh, south of tampa and you love inshore fishing out of a kayak out of a kayak yeah yeah i used to have a, a 23 footer boat i used to go fishing offshore loved it uh i had to change uh sold my boat got a kayak and since then yeah i love it Love inshore fishing. So, what, like, how long have you been inshore fishing? I don't, I don't know the whole story. Tell us uh, a little bit about that. When did you get the kayak? When did you start really targeting these these big snook and redfish and trout? So, I've been fishing inshore probably about four years now. Uh, my first year was uh, without salt strong, and I think for my first year, I never caught one inshore fish. Uh, maybe a snook on a live bait, but that was it. And uh, I started with Salt Strong about three years ago. Uh, you were advertising that I would catch more fish more, consistent, more consistently. So uh, I, I give you a shot. Love it, man. Now, three, yeah. three years later, you are very consistent from all the pictures I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started like, uh, like everybody, I think, three years ago, the big, uh, the big thing. And like you say, uh, Luke was saying that you needed to be an expert with one layer. And I started with the, the George Chad, uh, the Gulp or the, the, the Z-Man. And uh, right away, I, I, I caught more fish right away with the, the jerk Chad. Uh, it was difficult. Like it was very dependable on the weather, on the condition. Uh, from a kayak, the jerk Chad is not always like easy to fish. So I tried different lure out there, uh, like the twitching mullet or, or the, 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 the sub work lure, a little bit of top water. Uh, I was still, uh, I still had the problem, the issue of going to a, uh, a taco store and go through like eyes of lure. And even when you decided on what lure you're gonna buy, you still had the choice of like 15 different colors, three different sizes. And I would spend like six hours in the tackle store instead of spending it fishing. <laughs> so, uh, so when you came out with the, the, the slam shady about, I think it was in July, I think June or July, about a year and a half ago, uh, it was a game changer. 
yeah, I got I got my free pack like everybody. Yeah. And uh, my first time fishing with it, I think I have a report, I think, in there, and uh, I think I caught about 60 snook that six, day. 60, six, six zero? Six zero, yes. And I lost probably as many that they were not big. I mean, they were the biggest one were probably 23, 24 inches, yeah. but it was nonstop action. That's cool. So when, when did you decide to say, all right, I'm only going to fish paddle tails for a year? It's, it's not a decision that I made. Uh, that day I came, I came back home and I made a report like I always do when I go fishing. And uh, I tried to analyze why I caught so many snook. And, and I realized that uh, I, was, I, I went further with the kayak. I extended my range just by, by changing the lure and fishing with a paddle tail. It was more power fishing than just fishing one spot, knowing that on that spot there would be a fish. And at one point, he, he would take whatever lure I put in his face. And uh, instead of that, I, I decided to start like power fishing and put my lure in front of uh, more fish instead of different lure in, some, in, in front of one fish. Um, so after that, I just, I, I, I always had the, the slam shady uh, on, on the kayak. I had different lure and I realized that I was just not using the other two rods that I had on the kayak. So I just dropped off the two rods and just got one rod with one, one, uh, one lure. And was this the three inch or the four inch or the five inch slam? So I use, I use mostly the four inch, like 90% of the time I use, I use the four inch, uh, on a, on a three sixteen ounce, uh, jig head. Uh, that's what I mostly use in the winter. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have the three inch on a, on a quarter ounce, uh, just to fish a little deeper water, the, the five, six foot range. Uh, until the water warms up, I and mean, when it warms up, you can you can find some reds or some snook in like the the two three feet range, and that three sixteen cover that 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 range pretty good. And, and on the jig head, are you using the uh, weedless one or just a normal open face jig head? Because I know you're covering a lot of grass flats. Yeah, just just a, a trout eye jig head, like open open jig head. Uh, once once you start getting used to that to that jig head to that lure. It doesn't matter the, the grass. You're just gonna you're just gonna set your retrieve a little faster, a little slower. Uh, your rod a little higher, a little lower, and and you, you cover more more ground. It's it, the 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 hook set ratio is pretty good on a on a jig head. That's awesome. That's just a true testament to the specialist, yes. right? The specialist versus the the tackle store uh, tackle store Terry. What was the name of that? We did that survey yeah. a while back, Joe. Like. Yep. Those who just have, and we all do it, like we all buy a bunch of lures, but in reality, it's often like one or two. And, uh, and yeah, I, th I think you nailed it. Like as far as the, the paddle tail versus the jerk shad type baits, um, the jerk shad is more of the um, situational where it has to be calm winds when as soon as it's windy, it's really tough. And the paddle tails like all purpose, all season long, which is, that's awesome. You did it for the entire season. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's that's the one lure that I wouldn't be surprised worked as good as it did throughout all seasons. Yeah, and it's it's really simple to use. It's basically, I mean, you can change the retrieve, you can you can you can jig it, pop it on the bottom, but most of the time I just use it on casting rating. I mean, it's it's for somebody that that start a beginner. I mean, that's that's the perfect lure. It's you cast your rear, and um, as long as it's in the right spot, you, you catch some fish. Tony, I know you were kind of had a similar story, you know, kayak angler. I remember some of your early reports, you had a, a lot of fish caught on some type of jerk shad. And, and now you've had a ton on a paddle tail. What, what are your, what are your thoughts? What's your, is your go-to still a paddle tail for, for doing the exact same kind of snare for covering ground and just finding the fish? Yeah. So I, I use the jerk shad. It was a gulp jerk shad and I, unintentionally that was like all I was using because that was like my confidence lure just like with Eric he learned to use it under different conditions rigging it up differently and and it just worked then when we got the slam shady I started using the slam shady and yeah you can cover a lot more water you know I'll, I'll use that as a search bait you start catching fish and if the bite slows down in the same area then I'll switch over to a jerk shad just to slow it down and um, yeah it's pretty much the same I mean, like you said, when you have one lure and you can master that lure, get comfortable using it in all types of situations. I mean, it's a game changer, but what, 
what really matters is just being in the right spot. Yeah. What about you, Wyatt? Yeah, I would have to, that, that last statement is so key and it's what I think really translates into the success of paddle tails. Eric covered it. And, and just like Tony just said, it's all about being in the right spot. And most lures don't allow you to feel out the right spot. And a lot of time it, you know, we're not perfect. We're not always going to pick that, that spot that the fish are absolutely in every single time. So it requires us moving around and, and power fishing, like Eric said, and that's where the strength of the paddle tail comes in. I believe that you can work them faster than most artificial lures, probably 95% of artificial lures out there. Uh, and you can really still get that good retrieve where you're going to catch numbers. You're going to catch quality fish and continue to kind of search out good spots. Uh, I would say that I'm always using a paddle tail to feel out new areas. Uh, and then, you know, maybe I'll switch if I'm testing something else out that I want to see if it can produce because it's a more finesse presentation, uh, twitch baits, things like that, the jerk shads, but I always have a paddle tail tied on. And that's, that, that's really how I learned the marshes in North Carolina. It's how I'm fishing here in Texas right now. All the new zones that I go to and I cover, uh, cause I'm, I'm fishing new areas almost every single time. I'm able to feel things out quickly with the paddle tails. Uh, and it's just, it, it's amazing how it, it's just so simple. So you can slow roll it. You can double twitch, pause it. Uh, the versatility that you have with paddle tails is literally unmatched by any other lure. I think, um, it, it's just got so much to offer. Love it. Eric, how many, how many fish do you think you caught in the year on one paddle tail? <laughs> on paddle tail? Yeah. I don't know, hundreds. I mean, I don't know. I probably caught this this year. I probably caught 25, 30 redfish and snook. I can't count them. I mean, it's some outings are like 20, 30, 40. So it's hard to, to keep count with it. And so talk, talk about the, the type of spots. Cause I mean, that is something we can't lose focus on. We always want to do you know, we always want to obviously give the best advice, which is be a specialist, find something like a paddle tail, like the slam shitty paddle tail that just flat out works. But at the same point, both Tony and White hit on it. You still got to be in a good spot. Talk about kind of that, that trend, just transition from sure. going from kind of getting skunked. And it sounds like pretty inconsistent to, mm -hmm. to putting yourself in, in a good spot. What are you looking for when you're out in the water? Cause that seems to be, besides, you know, being an addict of, of buying a bunch of lures, but that seems to be one of the bigger problems that people have is I get out there and it, you know, I watched your video on how to find the best spots. And I watched the whole course on how to use satellite maps. But when I get out there, it looks so much different than what it looked like from a bird's eye view. Uh, kind of walk us through that. What, what was your, what was your journey like in terms and, of- and, and that's where the, the title tell is very interesting is that at night you're in front of your map uh, and you, you're selecting three, four spots, and with the paddle tag, there's no more three, four spots. Your your range that used to be two or three miles around is gonna become five or six or eight miles. And uh, so the, the spot can be a lot different. Uh, you said the three Bs, I mean, bird ball, uh, it, it's more like structure, uh, definitely structure and moving water. Uh, I will definitely look at, at structure. So anything that's uh, a dock, some piling, uh, some oyster bed, uh, just a point in the middle of a, in the middle of a, a mangrove line, uh, definitely structure and, and, and moving water. It doesn't matter if it's incoming or, or outgoing tide, but moving water. So I'm gonna reiterate that for everyone listening. So structure, the three Bs, birds bait boils and some type of of moving water yeah, it's a pretty good that's a pretty good recipe what's what's yeah. nice about the the paddle tail too is if you are fishing a dock you can cover that dock a lot quicker than if you're like throwing a jerk shad because you can make one cast to the jerk shad for probably five or six casts of a paddle tail and you'll you'll just be more likely to come across those fish sooner so you can cover more water and I know for you kayak anglers, Dave Otty was the one who, who really kind of turned us on to this. We all knew about, you know, trolling, but he's like, every time I'm going from spot to spot or even just leaving the ramp in his kayak, he throws on a slam shady paddle tail and just lets it sit there and troll behind him. And he's like, I catch fish, not every time, but 
it, it seems like every other trip I'm catching at least a couple of, of nice little trout just doing that. Do you do, you do that, Eric? Do you and yeah. you just troll? Yeah, I've, I've been doing that, and uh, I don't I don't usually fish for trout. It's it's more like a bycatch. I, I, I fish for <laughs> redfish and and, and and snook. So, but when I go from one spot to the other one, yeah, I just trail the the slim shady, and uh, yeah, most of the time you get you get some trout getting getting out. So what's your favorite snook or redfish? You can only only target one. No. What's yeah. what's the biggest snook you've got? Uh, thirty-eight. Thirty-eight, nice. 38. Yeah, and it was at, it was at night, and it was on on four inch, uh, uh, a four inch uh, slim shady. And when we say you need to match the hatch, it's not always true. That that snook had a um, a mullet in his mouth that was about nine to ten inches, and uh, didn't even finish swallowing it and it was already after that uh, that that four inch slam shady yeah they're they're opportunists yeah they're, they're, opportunists. Yeah, that's, they're that's more opportunistic it's... than than checking if it, if it matches your ash yeah by power fishing it, with the paddle tails it can be so productive um it's it's remarkable that's um that's another thing too i was the same way where i did jerk shads all the time and now i'm do i still do it when it's super calm out but otherwise i'm throwing paddle tails more often than not the bad yeah, news about that, this, oh, go for it, Eric. I'm sorry. I put that snook in the middle of the night too, and uh, I try. I like going like in the middle of the night, fishing the same spot that you fish during the day, but you fish them at night. And uh, first, there is less uh, pressure, and uh, it's it's more quiet. And uh, I was I was looking for a lure that could that could cover that too. And the, and the paddle tail is perfect for for fishing at night. The action on on that lure is is perfect. Yeah, of course, the, the bad news about this whole podcast is if everyone actually listened and took action, we're not going to have any more jobs because everyone's just going to be catching fish all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but just because it's because of you. <laughs> no, it's because it's so simple. I mean, it, it, not to say fishing simple, though, obviously putting yourself at the right spot at the right time is still critical. But um, I, this is su it's such a great reminder to all, including everyone on this podcast, because we're all guilty of it. Of, of man just sticking with something that we know works and I, i'm i'm proud of you for actually doing it for a whole year that's wild um so you did you ever go to the five inch i'm curious it was always most it sounds like 90 percent four occasionally three and that was it and you you, yeah, you ever go I, weedless i fish with the, the 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 five inch one time i had a nice snook on but it wasn't it wasn't bringing anything to the table nothing different so hmm. The the four inch I like I like it. It's it sit on the hook pretty good. I glue the I glue the paddle tail to the to the the jig head. So on on that slam shady the the zim and slam slam shady the four inches you can catch twenty five fish before that 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 lure come off the hook. So yeah. you don't have to check check your hook. Or it's same thing when you fish at night. You know that that lure is fishing. You don't have to check it. Or what kind of glue do you use when you do that? That's one thing I haven't tried yet. Just super glue, regular super glue. Do you put any scent on the on the slam shady doll, or you just let just let it rock straight out of the pack? What do you mean? Are you putting scent like uh, Procure or any kind of like a fish scent no, on there? I, no. I, I try the scent. Um, I try some uh, some Procure on it a couple of times at night. Same thing. Didn't didn't add anything to the. Uh, I think I think the action on the on the paddle tail is is what makes the whole uh, the, the the whole deal with the paddle tail. Yep, that's awesome. Um, so what what's your advice? I'd love to hear. Just take a little trip back in time, three so years ago. Besides joining the Salt Strong Insider Club to be get, become better for the for the people who are inconsistent, because it seems like it's it's the majority of us who are not as catching as many fish as we want. What's your advice? Because I think the last time I talked to you, you said, I mean, you had not been skunked and knock on some wood, but like you're at least catching a fish every single time you go out. I still haven't. Still haven't been skunked. No. Wow. Uh, so what, what's the advice? What's the secret? The, I don't think there's a secret and I don't fish any like secret places. I fish like places that are, that are known. I mean, I fish Cockroach Bay, I fish Bishop Harbor, I fish uh, Terrace. Uh, I mean, it's it's tough on the map. So I don't I don't think there is a secret. Uh, I think Tony said it. It's uh, confidence, being confident that you're doing the right thing, that you're putting the right lure in the right spot, and uh, and 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 
hang with it. And don't don't think that after after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you haven't catch a fish and it's not working. There's some days you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to grind it a little bit, and some days it's gonna be that easy. And uh, you need both. Uh, the, the day you're grinding, that's usually the day you're learning more. So, uh, but just keep it keep it simple. Keep it. it the, the problem is like like when you're in the tackle store, you you that that you you buying the right layer or the right color. It's the same thing when you're on the spot. Uh, you just fish for 15 minutes with one layer and you leave the spot and you're like, ah, maybe I should have chose a, a different layer. Maybe I should have chose a top water instead of, of fishing with a, a jerk shad. And so, so you, you, you never really know. So by keeping it simple uh, with a layer that you know you're confident, you know that if you went on the spot and there was a fish there, you would have caught it. I love it. Tony, could you do it? Could you go a whole year with one paddle tail? Probably. I mean, I've, I've gained a lot more confidence in it than when I first started using them. Like when I first started the using the jerk shad, I use a paddle tail every now and then, and it just wasn't producing for me personally as much as a jerk shad. So I always went back to that. But now that I've been using it more, I mean, it, like Luke said, it's always tied on at least one of my rods when I'm out there. And even like when I go freshwater fishing now i just bring my inshore stuff like i don't even have a freshwater tackle bag anymore i just use the same stuff i use inshore just just because of the confidence yep wyatt could you do it a whole year you couldn't do it no abs i absolutely <laughs> i would say i think honestly the 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 paddle tail was my first confidence lure that i gained uh you know we talked about my story moving from tennessee to north carolina now here to texas so my, I, I never really had a grounding in any kind of artificial lure. It was always live bait for me, you know, before uh, when I would travel to the coast and I would fish. Uh, but the paddle tail was the first lure that I really kind of locked in on. And, and now I, I do create a lot of tutorials about other lures um, for our insiders. But, if, you know, if it was up to me, I would literally just use the paddle tail because it takes the simplicity uh, of just being able to cover more spots, which is really the most important thing, uh, but being able to do it effectively with a lure that's very simple to use, like paddle tail, just makes things a lot easier. I think once you start adding more things into the equation, you know, it gets a little bit more complicated. There's room for error there. That's not to say that some lures on some specific days won't produce more fish or more quality fish, but I can always depend on the paddle tail to catch me some fish. So I would definitely say I could go for it for a year, but I know our insiders would get really bored of me just watching fish get caught with the slam shady, which would be pretty easy. I would say here in Texas, uh, especially with all the trout that we've got, uh, they just love that slam shady paddle tail here. Yeah. Luke, could you do it? Hold I couldn't here. do it. I got, I don't have too much ADD and I, I just always like to be testing stuff. So like it would be driving me crazy. Yeah. But, but if it was, if there was one, it would be the paddle tail because that's the one thing I have, I have every time I have it rigged up um, because it's the confidence thing. If things aren't working, kind of go back to that, but I still have to be right now. It's uh, I'm, I've been using paddle tail for any day. That's not just flat calm. And if it's flat calm and I want to go in the shallows and I throw the leprechaun. So like I basically have a two, two lure uh, thing, but then, when the sheep's head are going in thick, now I'm throwing a crab lure. So I'm, I'm one of those guys that always has to have a bunch of lures. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. It's been a, it's been a problem I've had for, for as long as I can remember. That's the nice thing about having a boat. When you're stuck on a kayak like me and Wyatt and Eric, you have to minimize. <laughs> yeah, very true. And for those of you listening who just heard Luke say, I throw out a leprechaun, uh, he's not throwing out some like good luck charm. It's uh, <laughs> it's actually a lure called the Alabama leprechaun. It, uh, and also I saw some, some dude on Instagram. I don't even know how it came up. It was when you were, um, I think, oh yeah, you were using that, uh, the Alabama leprechaun, the, uh, when you had it double, rigged up. The double rig? Yeah. And he's like, oh, just for the record, Salt Strunk did not invent the paddle tail like they claim. Uh, one, we've never said that we invented the paddle tail. We invented Slam Shady, registered trademark, uh, but we did not invent the paddle tail. We just talk about it a lot and absolutely love it. Um, it's because it works. That's why we talk about it. We yeah. Talk about yeah it, works. It, it does work, clearly. And uh, we got a man here who's used it for a year. And so are you going to change? Like, you know, years gone by now. You, st I saw your last report. You're still using the Slam Shady Z-Man yeah, Slam Shady I, paddle tail. I put, you gonna... I put some fish on the uh, Alabama Proton too. 
Okay, so cool. I, I switched it up a little bit. Uh, after after Pat uh, podcast, who I was pretty interested in the the the, the top water is, a, is is pretty nice by too, but it's it's hard to go from something that work that produce fish. Yeah. And uh, when you I don't fish that often, probably once a week. So if I could do like twice a week, maybe I would do like half and half. So fish like some some top water there and some some uh, some paddle tail. But for now the paddle tail worked really good. It, it catch me some fish when I go, so uh, and I don't I don't have to overthink it. I, I can I can come up with my plan at night. Within five minutes, I know where I'm going. I just check the tide, the wind, and within five minutes, I can come up with the plan. So. Well, I think you just gained a lot of friends. There's uh, uh, probably thousands of men right now who just heard you say, I don't get to fish often. It's only once a week. And they're now telling their spouses like, Hey, honey, like I'm trying, I'm only going once a month. Like I'm, I'm struggling here. I need some more fishing time. This guy, Eric says at least twice a week. I love it. Twice, twice would be the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I still don't know how Pat did that. Um, yeah, top water is tough because top water is very situational. Man. Like it's uh, it's really tough in the winter, and then in the summer, it's really tough. It's great in the mornings and evenings, but really tough in the middle of the day. Whereas a paddle tail can work anytime. So like the fact that he stuck through on a on a very situational type of lure, like that was, I learned so much from that. that was a really cool podcast. I kn- Eric, I know that Tony's. I think it was your first that big redfish, right? That. 40 or so inch that was caught on the slam shady z man but it was on an owner twist like hook right like one of those weighted hooks yeah it was my first trip out using the the minnow z and i had it on a 1 16th ounce three out twist lock hook just power fishing casting around it was windy i was just drifting across the flat and it got slammed <laughs> fish hit it so hard it got slack in the line thought i lost it reeled up because the wind was blowing me towards the fish that that was that was a fun fight so eric do you ever rig it up like that no never never only on that uh trot i jig head and dang like a specialist to the t have you tried the texas i jig head out of curiosity have you, have you i did with it? i did one time and uh <laughs> same thing didn't bring anything to to the plate so the the, the action was the same the the Hook up ratio was even like a little, it was worse than the, the trout eye. So, so I didn't stick with it. Hmm. And it doesn't, it doesn't skip well, right? Like if, if you're fishing docks, like yeah, that, that, the kind yeah, of it doesn't, it doesn't skip like, and it, it's going to take like weird angle. Like if it cast, if it catch the wind. So when you want to fish like right on the bottom of a, right at the foot of a, a mangrove, I mean, it's, it doesn't help. That's a good point. Yeah, because its benefit is that it doesn't sn- get snagged as much. But uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. And many it sounds like the the cons that you just listed outweigh the benefit because it definitely I've tested it. The hookup ratio is not as good. Um, definitely doesn't skip well, but it's it does um, at least does prevent some snags. Yes, but interesting. So I, I would have thought that you would have liked it, but um, yeah, it makes sense if you if you're gonna go with one, might as well do the standard jig head. That's why I want. That's why I wanted test the bomber a little bit more uh, this year um, on, on a twist lock hook and uh, I, I started last last um, fall and it was it was pretty good it was pretty good so that you said the bomber the five yeah yep. yeah yeah that was a good, that was a great fall early winter bait yeah that's my favorite fall one because it launches it, it's it casts noticeably further and you put it on a weighted hook with like a, a one-eighth weighted hook um it launches and cover you can cover a ton of ground that's what i caught that i mean i didn't weigh it but just based on the measurements close to seven pound bass just recently bomber on a little weighted hook right around structure what do you know uh it man it just flat out works slam shady baby what about you tony i always thought that uh that the 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 redfish wanted like something a little slower uh something on the bottom like a shrimp like something that that would move slower and uh, this year i caught a lot of redfish on the paddle tail just real like steadily and just they were going after it just straight retrieve straight retrieve yeah they would follow it and, and kill it what what kind of depth i mean I, it sounds like grass flats and mangrove lines are you ever going like deeper at all like you know 
six, seven, eight feet at all? I never, I never go rarely past six feet. Okay. Yeah. Most, most, most of the time, except if it's winter time, I would go down to five, six feet, but most of the time it's out of foot to three or four foot of water. Man, it's impressive. I've used the I've used a bomber. This is the only time I've used a jig head on a paddle tail is when I'm fishing the inlet. I've used the five inch bomber at Sebastian Inlet on either one and a half ounce or two ounce jig head. And it's, you know, 15, 20 feet there and the current's ripping and I've caught some really nice snook out there on it. On a one and a half ounce jig head? Yep. That's one and awesome. a half ounce. It looks like a cannonball on it, but <laughs> yeah, like, what are you supposed to do with this thing? <laughs> <laughs> probably cast out across the inlet yeah it, it would cast a legit long. mile <laughs> just because that current cranks through there you got to get it down yeah when i was fishing in north carolina i was i i it was rare that i ever used a weighted hook it was always with the the jig heads like tony's saying it in heavy current areas you know we had the big tidal swings plus we didn't have much grass there uh i don't think i ever used a weighted hook it's funny now I don't think I'm using any jig heads at all um, around these grass flats just because I'm kind of mixing up my retrieves going after different species. But it seemed like, you know, you could you could make those adjustments with the jig heads um, and, and cover one specific area, catch several different species by just playing with the jig head size. With weighted hooks, uh, I find that I can just because it's it, there's not a whole lot of varying depths in, you know, the grass flats and coastal creeks. You, know, you might have a, a small cove that's two feet deep uh, and you can use your one eighth ounce jig heads there. You come outside of the mouth of that creek, which leads into a larger sub creek. Uh, and it's like, you know, eight foot of depth. So it was, uh, it, it was weird having to play with that. I would say on the grass flats, it's just, you know, you can go with just one standard weighted hook and, and you're totally fine. Uh, but I, I do feel like I've probably caught more fish on the jig heads again, mainly because I was in North Carolina for the longest time. Uh, but it, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. Very situational. Good. Uh, Eric, I got a kind of a pivot question. What, what kind of kayak are you using? It, that was a, a popular podcast we did all about kayak brands. What, uh, what do you like? Uh, I have a OB, uh, a Pro Angler 14. Cool. Uh, I like it. It's, it's pretty spacious. Uh, you can stand on it. super stable. Uh, I can cast, I used to fish at first, I used to fish with live bait. I could cast my 10 foot net from it. Um, it's very stable. The only inconvenience is that it's pretty heavy to put it in the water. You need to have like a, an easy access uh, and it catch the wind like pretty fast. Tony, you know anything about that? About the pro angler? Yeah. It was on my radar uh, to buy, but it just seemed a little bit too big for me. Uh, I like to be able to get my kayak into some tight spaces sometimes. Can't always back the truck down, and I'm not a fan of putting it on a cart, so I just back my truck up to the area where I'll carry it. And I think the Pro Angler is like probably 20 or 30 pounds heavier than the Outback, which is what I have. But it's a, it's a nice kayak. I mean, that's, that's a Cadillac right there. <laughs> Tony, have, have you seen your muscles? I think that's why God gave you muscles. You got to be able to pick kayak, any kind of kayak up, probably, <laughs> probably even a boat, GNU, I, I one handed over the head. Ah, that's too much work. I don't want to work <laughs> that hard when I'm out on the water. <laughs> that's why you hit the gym. So you don't have to do it out in the water. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Looks can be deceiving when you got a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. So, so what's, what's next uh, Eric, you gotta, I, I know you kind of said, Hey, why, why kind of screw up something that's working, but, uh, are you, you, you curious about any other lures? Are you going to try anything else new? Uh, what's, uh, what's it going to look like here as the, as the weather warms up a little bit and you get out there more. So I'm, I'm still looking for a, a snook over 40 and uh, I don't want to catch it in the past or in deeper water. I want to find that snook on the, on the shallow, uh, I'm I'm gonna try this year to go after a, after a, a slam that will be close from a hundred inches. Dang, so, yeah, that's a goal of mine. <laughs> I love it, man. And you you've yeah. had some like even some good flounder picks and stuff in the your reports in the past too. Yeah, 
yeah, and the, the flounder love the love the paddle tail. They they take it even just when it flutters down the water. Like you, you don't even reel the paddle tail. They just they just take it like right at the at the descent. So that's awesome. Cool. You guys got any more uh, questions about the paddle tail? Thoughts, concerns, excitement. Yeah, I just can't. I can't wait to see his uh, the hundred inch slam. That's awesome. That's yes. awesome. Cool. And, uh, and the big snook, yeah, spring and fall for those big snook and, and your area getting up on there in the shallows. Yeah. So we're coming up to it. I'm I'm starting to see some of the big ones showing up, but it'll be it should be really good in another month or so. It's it's warming up pretty good here right now. It's going to be almost ninety, I think, by the end of the week. Don't tell Wyatt that he's yeah, yeah. still <laughs> still thawing out over here. Still cracking icicles off his off his car. <laughs> cool guys well, this is fun uh i i love i love the story i saw actually luke i saw it luke saw it and luke's like hey it'd be cool cool podcast uh and and eric man thank you so much for all that you do i know you've been a, a awesome member and just a, a great testimonial and uh, I'm excited to meet you again. I know we've met a few times, you know, meeting face to face, and that actually came up this uh, this morning with some other members. So you know, uh, I think everyone's just kind of itching, you know, to to go out and and do some meetups again. And uh, at least as of right now, you know, these COVID numbers are, are looking better, and heck, a lot of people I, I know uh, are now getting the vaccines and stuff. So we'll be doing that soon. And I'm excited to to see you again and probably do something at. I don't know, E.G. Simmons or DeSoto. Um, I know there's a couple other parks that people have mentioned, so uh, I'm pumped for that. What, what are your thoughts? What's your favorite uh, park to go meet up in that Tampa area? E.G. is like two minutes from my house. So, oh, so you must love that. I love it. Yeah, it's a good yeah, question I missed, around there I missed too. the last one. I was, I was working both days, and I missed the last one. And uh, I know you had a lot of fun over there, and uh, I really wish I could have gone, but... but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go anywhere in the Tampa area for, for a good meetup. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you missed some of the camping in the late night. Uh, we had uh, Bubba, one of our yeah. Insider members. Uh, he, the dude, he brings the bass everywhere. He literally brings a truck full of like monster speakers. And uh, he's a DJ and singer, songwriter. And man, we had an absolute hoot hanging out with him uh, around a fire <laughs> with some other members. <laughs> Always fun. Oh, it was a blast. Well, brother, thank you again uh, for anyone who wants to see all of Eric's reports. He's always putting them up in the insider community. We just did a podcast recently. Uh, it was titled why, you know, 20,000 members are leaving Facebook groups to, to join this online community. And it's the insider community. Uh, just so helpful. We got people like Eric, like Pat, who was on the prior podcast, like Bill, who's on a podcast talking about casting reels. They're just in there. Super, super helpful. I love the fact there's, you know, there's no cursing, there's no negativity, you know, people are just sharing what's, what's working. And, uh, and of course we're in there every single week sharing where we're fishing, what we're, uh, what we're using, what, what's working, what's not working. And, uh, and ultimately just, you know, trying to give you shortcuts and, uh, and, and help you shorten the learning curve on going out there and finding feeding fish. Cause the ultimate goal is, is stories like, like Tony's and, and Wyatt's and yours, Eric, where you go from being a consistent to, I mean, was it three years now? You haven't been skunked in three years. Is that? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah, three years. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, fishing oh, once that's... a week throughout the year too. I mean, that's, that is, uh, that's, that's awesome. And that's a testament to how sticking to the basics works, yes. right? Just covering ground, get a lure that you trust and just go out there and fish. And uh, I think a lot, I think a lot of people overthink it. Yep. Or they don't do the work. Cause you, I'll be honest, you can't just join the club tomorrow and this is going to happen. I mean, Eric put in the work. He went through the materials he got in the courses. I mean, there's a reason that we put all this stuff together and spend a lot of time, a lot of energy and a ton of money building it all out because it does work. It's a, it, it's never easy. Fishing's mm -hmm. always an ever, an ongoing ever. I mean, right. You're, you're learning every day, even the, the top, top guys we had CA on. Uh, and he's like, man, I learned something new every single trip I'm out. Uh, so it's it's what do you call it, Luke? The the never ending puzzle, the ongoing yeah, puzzle that the just puzzle keeps... the puzzle that never ends. You yeah. can it's never you never can solve it. All you can do is get better and uh, and, and learn from learn from it all. So it's uh, that's why it's, that's why it's awesome. We can do we'll do it forever, and it'll always be uh, it'll always be exciting. 
But if your goal is consistency, which it should be for anyone who loves fishing, then definitely join us in the Insider Club. And of course, you get to save 20% or more on all of our lures, including Eric's favorite, the Z-Man Slam Shitty, which we just got a bunch more in uh, in stock. Uh, that whole thing's been crazy, the whole tackle side. we if, if you're still listening, we apologize in advance. It's still nuts. We have, we have conversations every week with all the biggest manufacturers. And I mean, there it used to be we could get something in let's just say three to four weeks. Like I could call up Z-Man or shoot them a message with a with with, with a, a, a an order, and maybe four weeks. Like that would be like, oh my gosh, they're taking forever. And now they're like, yeah, it's gonna be four months, and it's not their fault. I mean, it's it's just the whole the whole supply chain is completely out of whack, uh, and and a lot of it's just even just small materials, even like Saint Croix, right? They had like. I don't remember the number, but it was crazy amount of blanks. Like, let's just say they had 200,000 blanks in Wisconsin, but they couldn't get the components for it. They couldn't get the actual, you know, the guides or the Fuji guides in Japan. Like, so it's just all these little small things. And then all of a sudden someone gets COVID at, let's just say St. Croix, and they got to shut the whole floor down and people got to go get tested. Like, it's just, everything has been pushed back. So thank you guys for all the patience. Know that we are incredibly frustrated. But at the same point, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the, the times are getting a little bit slower. They're getting a little bit better. And all the manufacturers, like it, it you know, we're, we're catching up. They're finally starting to catch up and it's getting better. So thank you guys for all the patience, all the love and the support. Eric, thank you so much for, uh, for everything and especially taking the time to do this. This has been really, really fun. One, uh, basically one lure. I mean, four inch, it sounds like is kind of your go-to and one color and, and, one maybe, jig head. maybe two jig heads but mostly one and and just man talk about making it happen so kudos to you dude that's that's not easy no thank thank you thank you i appreciate uh i appreciate that you had me here uh appreciate all you do for for all these people for that that sign up for soul strong and that that you're gonna help them and uh and and not only you but once they're in the in the club i mean other angler helping angler i mean it's 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 a true thing i mean it's it's a family uh you're gonna meet people that's gonna even take you fishing showing them showing you their spot and uh, and it doesn't happen anywhere else yep. we appreciate it my man guys uh appreciate your time as well and we'll have to do this again and maybe next year it'll be a different maybe a different size paddle tail maybe you'll go down to three or five uh maybe the bomb the bomber the, we'll do a one-year bomber yeah, so so Eric, my my biggest snook has been on the five inch on the five inch slam shady. So it's forty two. Yeah. So um, so I think it's worth it. It's worth a shot trying the bigger one. Yeah, I have I have a couple of pack. I might I might take them with me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I let, I let you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll be looking forward to your next report, and hopefully we'll be seeing a one hundred uh inch slam on there. That would be uh, pretty awesome. So yeah. guys, so, Wyatt, Tony, Luke, appreciate you, Eric we out if you guys have any questions and want to especially if you're listening and want to see the full video go to saltstrong.com forward slash podcast and you'll see it right there in the list and make sure to subscribe if you're watching this on the tube youtube that is and of course if you are listening on itunes or spotify please do subscribe it helps us out we don't have any ads on this we've said no to every sponsor who's asked to do it because we want this to be fresh and clean and not have seven minutes of ad roll in the beginning. And all we ask in return is that you share it and, uh, and give us a review and subscribe. So guys, we appreciate you. And we'll talk to you on the next episode. Peace. We out. Good. Later. <laughs>